What is friendship? The Oxford English Dictionary defines a friend as a person with whom one has a bond of mutual affection. A person who is not an enemy or an opponent. Or finally, a familiar or helpful thing. And Connor is most certainly a familiar or helpful thing. Well, most of the time anyway. Back in December, I took Connor on a whirlwind camping trip to a remote island in the Pacific where he had, and I quote, the worst night's sleep of his life. Now look, to be fair, it was pretty bad. And if you ever hire a so-called camping expert, make sure they don't bring an Amazon basic fucking sleeping bag in the height of the winter season. This is a wacky right. weekend, this is wacky shit. And so this episode of Wacky Weekend, the first and hopefully not the last since the ill-fated camping trip, is something of an apology tour to make it up to my good friend Connor. A surprise luxury trip where he'll dine on the finest sake and ramen in all of North Japan. All leading up to something very special. An overnight stay in the most isolated traditional inn in the entire country. And one that famously has no internet, no Wi-Fi, and no electricity. <laughs> okay, I know what you might be thinking. Wait a minute, this doesn't sound like a reward. This sounds like torture. You're torturing the poor boy. Blah, 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 wait. But wait, look, Connor has a problem, right? Generally, he's got a really nasty phone addiction. Whenever you're with him, he's glued to his phone. And if you ever talk to him, he scarcely looks up during the interaction. He's glued to it 24 seven. We're gonna put a stop to that. Now that's not his fault. Society's done this. Society has made him, you know, shit. And I'm gonna reverse it by taking him out to the wilderness where he literally can't use his phone and get him looking away from this at the bigger picture, at nature, at the world around him. And if that's not an incredible gift, if that's not an amazing reward, then quite frankly, I don't know what is. He's gonna love it, trust me. <laughs> Either that or he's gonna beat me to death with a stick. Well, Connor, here we are in Akita. Time to make it up to you after oh. the uh, camping debacle. I feel like your version of making it up to me is somehow making it worse. Why would you say no? Ah, oh, that's just the normal Chris style, doubling no, down. No, no. Look yeah. at the scenery, take in the snow, the mountains. Clearly, mm. this is going to be a good trip, right? I'm no, scared. Special. I'm scared, Chris. Why are you scared? Uh, the last time you took me on an adventure, I nearly died. So. You did? No, you didn't. I you did got a little bit cold in a bag. A little bit cold? A little, a little cold. bit cold? It's fine. <laughs> you didn't even bring us a fucking pillow, you dick. This is going to be... What are we doing this time, then? I've got a very special accommodation lined up for you tomorrow, right? Yeah. It is out here in the mountains. It's very remote, and it has a kind of some special features. Features that okay. I think you need more than anyone I know. Special features, you freeze to death. Ooh. What feature is it? Believe in me, trust me for once, for God's oh, sake. I don't God. trust you. And so begins Connor's relaxing and in no way suspicious weekend of luxury. And first off, we're heading into Akita Prefecture to the remote peninsula of Oga. While all of Japan is facing the issue of depopulation, nowhere is it more apparent than North Japan. Sadly, Akita is the fastest declining prefecture in the whole country, with each year bringing more abandoned shops, homes and businesses along the streets of the Sea of Japan coastline. In fact, the population of Oga is only 25,000, with over half the residents being over the age of 65, and the population predicted to decline by as much as 50% in the next 20 to 30 years. With that harrowing vision of the future in mind, local entrepreneurs have taken it upon themselves to try and breathe fresh life into Japan's dying countryside. And our first stop of the day is proof of that very idea. Ogaya is a ramen shop created by serial entrepreneur Okazumi-san, who having turned the local former train station across the road into a sake brewery, next turned his attention to giving Oga its own regional ramen flavor. Working alongside one of Japan's biggest ramen chains, Ipudor, and local chef Ito-san, they sought to create a flavour that would help put the area on the map. Something that's evidently working, given the long queue out the front of the restaurant. え、私たちオガヤではこうげんひなえじどりというWow. I've already mixed all of mine up. I yeah, Con didn't wait together. a single solitary second. He's chucked it all in. Well, it's ramen. You have to eat it right <laughs> away. It's disrespectful. All right. I'm going to go for a, a bite then. Mm. 
Mm. That's really smooth. It's also kind of light. Normally, if I get ramen, I go for one that puts me in a coma. This feels like I can, <laughs> I can actually do stuff after it. It's always intimidating doing food eating in front of Japanese people. Because look, we have three staff members. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Gazamas. Good morning. <laughs> Standing there. And like, British people have the worst reactions to food. We're like, oh yeah, there's food. Yeah, but I'm, this is really good. Oh, the pork is really good. Mm. I've nailed that. Here, it almost looks like beef. It looks like something mm. you get in like shabby shabby, right? Mm. Yeah. Normally you find like cheaper chashu with a lot more fat on it. Mm. Uh, but this, I mean, you can see it. Like that is, oh, that's a man. really beautiful piece of meat. Mm. Oh. Such elegance. I'm trying my hardest here to enjoy my food. Oh, hey, you need this. <laughs> it's like Lady in the Tramp, except it's just tramp and tramp. Yeah. But at least the ramen's good. Oh, it's really good. Jesus, Connie, you made short work of oh. that. It's gone. It's gone in like 50 seconds. That was good. That was, that was very easy to eat very fast. Mm. Beautiful braised pork, wonderful noodles, tantalizing broth, which you've drunk all the Yeah, I drank I don't all the normally broth. drink the absolute bottom of the ramen. Wait, broth. why? I love it. It's the saltiest part. I think I'm already salty enough, though. You, are, like, you are pretty salty. <laughs> like, in the winter month, it's pretty cold up here right now. And, like, oh, this would be perfect. Sitting in a nice ramen shop. I, ramen shops in winter, they're mm. at their best, right? You come in, it's really cozy, it's warm, steam everywhere, hot piping bowl of soup. Yeah. Beautiful. But this ramen shop is actually owned by the same guy who owns the brewery oh. across the street, which we're going to take you to next. Oh, very exciting. And they've got ramen sake, sake that pairs with ramen. Is it going to be a prank or something? Does he, well, like, there's no, there's does he use locusts? Is that the, no, is that the no, trick? There's yeah. no pranks on this show. It's always going to be a prank with no. you. There's always something. This is your relaxation trip. Massages, ramen, sake. Well, so it's going to be amazing. So good. Just a few steps away from Ogaya, across the road, is Ine Togave, Okazumi-san's local craft sake brewery. And he's agreed to show us the inner workings of how the drink is made. Perhaps against his better judgment. It's very reminiscent of uh, Charlie and Chocolate Factory. I want to go in, in the chocolate lake. <laughs> I was saying you remind me of uh, Augustus Gloop when he sees the, <laughs> the chocolate river. I'm not, not <laughs> falling in the hop. Craft sake differs from traditional sake or nihonshu in that extra flavours or ingredients are added to the brewing process. Traditionally, to receive a licence to make sake in Japan, you need to have a connection to an already established historical sake brewery, making the process of creating a new sake brewery practically impossible. But by adding new flavours such as hops, fruit essences or agave syrup, hence the name Ineto Agave, you can obtain a licence to make craft sake. The same licence used to make drinks like doboroku, a type of cloudy, unrefined sake. The perfect drink for an unrefined Welshman. I'd love to put you in one of these and sort of roll you down a hill. Why would you like That's a fantasy I have. <laughs> Maybe next, next wacky weekend, <laughs> sort ま、今、小川の人口どんどん減っていて、で、and so, with the hopes of Olga's future resting on our shoulders, there was no choice but to taste the sake for ourselves. <laughs> or rather, for Connor to taste it as I'm chauffeuring him around. God damn it, next time we need to pay for a driver. That's a, that's a lot. That's okay. That's. 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 I thought we were just doing a tasting, not an onslaught. <laughs> Ooh, that is nice. Shame you. Oh, you should try. Oh, see what I'm saying. Deck United. Perfect, having to sit and witness Sea Dog Drunkard down all the craft sake while listening to his mid tier commentary. What on earth am I putting myself through? Whoa. But that's really, really nice. Chris, if only you could have a sip of this amazing wine sake. I've never had a flavour like this before. Really oh, it's just so, it smells so good. Oh, We're me. not doing this. This is actually torture. You right. know, the island would have, would have been a lot more bearable if I could have downed six bottles. This, I think I would have been fine. Be. I wouldn't have needed to get up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> just I don't think you would have got up in the morning. <laughs> no, for once, I really, really like something that you've taken me to. This is great. 
This is a great start to the trip. Yeah, I'm going to live here. <laughs> well, the population's going down, so if you can bump the population... Yeah, no wonder the population's going down. No one can do anything because they're all drunk off all the amazing sake. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't get anything done. Yeah, I'm fucked. I'm drunk. He's already drunk. <laughs> See that box there? Okazumi san gave us the entire brewery. All those drinks Colin didn't finish. He's handed them over, so Finished. I can have a taste. I'm sorry, was I, was I supposed to drink seven whole bottles of I sake? thought that's what the plan was. <laughs> get you a little bit drunk, relax. What, alcohol you know? poisoning was the plan? I will say this is the first time I think I've ever seen you enjoy sake. I've always yeah. brought you a bottle and you're like, what is it all, okay, what, savages, what, what is this? Like, you, <laughs> you, you, bring me, you bring me like the, the convenience store 200 yen one shot sake, which is, which is filth. Right. It's horrible. Oh. This stuff is actually really nice. I think that trying and trying to make something the community can get excited about it's definitely one way to keep people, you know, st sticking around. And if you want to, you want a light ramen. I think uh, it's great. Mm. Now it's time for a light drinking session over oh. at our hotel. Oh, it's exciting! <laughs> Welcome to our hotel room slash fully stocked bar. We've got. Welcome to the Sake Emporium. <laughs> Time to try some. Long awaited, much needed. This, I reckon this is going to be a Dobroku. Dobroku. New kids on Dobroku. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? That's than yours, but no, cheers. It's, anyway. oh, cheers. You've had experience. Hey. Mmm. Oh, it's like an alcoholic yogurt. It's got a very mild carbonated taste. But are you excited? Right now we're in a mm. pretty run of the mill kind of real calm in. Mm. It's got a nice tatami there. A door. TV. An urn with the ashes of Connor's enemies. Oh, well, I'm excited for the food. I'll try the onsen later, but uh, wondering what we're doing tomorrow. Wow. Well, well, let's just say you might want to make your phone calls, your last phone calls today. Or oh, before I get to the end. Hmm? You might want to make your phone calls. What, what today. is it? What is it? Make a phone call. Why? Tomorrow we're going deep. We're going real deep. Oh, God. Deep. Deeper than you've ever been in your life Do they in have Japan. Wi -Fi? Do they... <laughs> I don't think this place has Wi Fi, Connor. Yeah. And you have to worry about that tomorrow, let alone there. But so far, have I, have I done you proud? Have I made up for the camping? Yeah, I'm just waiting for it to all go wrong, as it always does with your videos. They say, oh, we brought a man to watch over you tomorrow as you sleep. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> I really wanted that. <laughs> you just always find a way to ruin it. What are the three, your three biggest nightmares? Like, theoretically, this place we're going tomorrow, what are the three worst things it could be? No internet. No internet. Caves. Caves. Ca just caves. Bears. <laughs> Bears. <laughs> no I, internet cave and bears, yeah. There's, de there's definitely going to be bears. Yeah. Oh. One, one thing is it is quite deep, it's quite remote. Yeah. And it is in the area with the most bears uh, per capita in Japan. How are you going to survive? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it, you're going to be there. So worst case, I just push you out and I run. You know, well, you know what they say, right? I don't have to be faster than the bears, just faster than the slowest person in the group. Which... I was the fastest runner in my school. <laughs> Hey, you ain't gonna outrun me. <laughs> where, where did you go to school when you were the fastest? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would love to know this school. So, given we're off into the wilderness without electricity or internet, I've been trying to get some work done in advance. Check this out. This is the iconic Wacky Weekend opening. When Connor's friend animated this, they absolutely nailed it. It was so cool, very retro, very fun. There was just one problem. When it came to me, it sounded like this. There was nothing. It was down to me to try and work out the sound design. And from there, right, it's just a matter of finding the sound effects. I've got these, like, car doors. I've got, like, a car crash, which is unfortunate because I'm the driver in the animation. What the hell was I thinking? Some swords, because we always clash, and a little bit of neon in there. Put it all together, and you get Wacky Weekend. But I get pretty much all my music, all my sound effects from one place, and they've partnered with us for this trip, for this Wacky Weekend. Epidemic Sound has the best online library of music for creators to use. And over the years, I've used well over 100 songs from their catalogue. I love them for two reasons. Number one, the music is amazing. It speaks for itself. Hell, I've even got this swanky playlist, which I'll link in the description box, of some of my favourite songs, inspired by Tokyo at night. 
But the second reason I love them is in a world where YouTubers often get copyright strikes for music they've used, typically under dubious circumstances as well, I have never ever had a single issue with Epidemic or any of the music that I've used. Perhaps best of all, the sound effect library has over 90,000 sound effects, half of which I've used for the Wacky Weekend intro alone. But rather than troll websites all day looking for sound effects, they're all here to use in a seemingly unlimited library. Honestly, it's never been cheaper or easier to be a YouTuber or filmmaker, and Epidemic Sound are a big reason why. Be sure to grab your seven-day free trial in the description box below. The next morning, we continue our road trip north to the neighbouring prefecture of Aomori. And before heading off into the wilderness, we first grab a quick breakfast at a quirky fish market with a unique way of experiencing all the bustling food stalls within. So, I know you're Mr. Benevolent Dictator. You like to choose what? things. You like choice, That's right? you. This fish market, there's 30 shops, right? And the problem with fish markets is often you go in mm. and you have to buy fish to take home. Mm. You can't like just eat it there yeah, and then. This place, yeah. you get 12 coupons for 2,000 yen. Okay. And you exchange the coupons for fish at different stands. So like prepared little little bowls that you can take. It's called knock it on. Don't knock it <laughs> until you tried it. I Let's just go. like the idea that I'm a benevolent dictator. Of course you are. Come because on. I like choosing food. Come on, <laughs> choices, choices. And there's no better way to please the iron grasp of a benevolent dictator than a bountiful breakfast of shrimp, salmon, tuna and scallops. Just grab yourself a ticket for 2,000 yen and trade the coupons for the seafood of your choice to create the Nokedon rice bowl of your dreams. It really is a great way to experience a slice of the local side of northern Japan with friendly stall owners starting conversations and coercing you to buy their products with their sweet little lies. <laughs> It's a really cool vibe though. I feel like fish markets can often be not so inviting to everyday folks. Not just tourists, but you know, people coming to eat. And uh, yeah, here, it's kind of like a, oh, it's really interactive and fun. Look at that. Two pretty different looking bowls. Mine now cracked. <laughs> Yours is very tuna heavy, I'm not gonna lie. Well, I am no stranger. I know what's the best tasting fish, and it's the otoro. Yeah, the fattiest true. tuna. It's two tickets for one slice. Yeah, I know. I actually regret getting this ebby when I could have had more tuna. So I used 60% of my tickets on three slices of delicious tuna. <laughs> well, they but saw you, you coming like back, a, though, but yeah. they were like, oh my god, he's back. Yes, yeah, my like money back. Your ball. You went for the entire fucking cast of Little Mermaid in so that bowl. Jesus I, Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of more of a communist sort of socialist <laughs> in the sense that I, I distribute tickets to pretty much every store in the place, whereas Connor's like, Take it all. You have chutoro. Take There's, it all. You you just gave everything to one shop. Oh, yeah, because they, they, they did good stuff. They have unagi, which you didn't get as well. Delicious unagi, a delectable dish. You know how this works, though, right? With uh, donburi, you mix up the soy sauce and the wasabi, and then you pour it on like that. Savage. I can't do that. No. That's <laughs> how you do it. That's a savage. That I'm is not, the way I'm to do it. it. You can't dip it all in, can you? Well, I was gonna. That's what I was gonna do. No. All right, let's give it a shot. That's beautiful. Oh, look at that. Look at the marbling on that. That's so good. Mm. I want to relive that moment again. Thank God I got two more pieces. <laughs> oh, I can do just that. Now you're rammed full of all the fish in Aomori oh. Fish Market. Stuff. It's time to head off into the mountains for your big surprise. I'm scared. <laughs> you, normally when you feed me, dude, it means you're about to do something horrible. <laughs> gonna carve you up and roast yeah. you over a fire. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna, <laughs> gonna make me run a lap in the snow or something. It's not a bad idea. Mm. Alright then, come on then, what are we doing? Come on, tell me. Yeah, I've, I've hinted at lots of things. Have some guesses. See if you can guess what, what's so special about this place. Well, you've told me, you know, tell everyone your last wishes. You know, the internet's gone. <laughs> no, I, it just said like, ring uh, people. You were but... like, you were like, uh, go go toilet because you might not be able to. Which there's suggests been, that been... I can't even like, go outside. There's a toilet. Okay. No, that was just... you've, you've prepared like, <laughs> A, a, a Russian winter stockpile. Look at this. <laughs> this is huge. You were like, get, it, get everything. Yeah, before we, we leave, we need all the supplies. Now, this is kind of tough, because last time you didn't tell me what we were doing, we nearly froze to death. But we had a great camping I, experience. It was we. We had a great time. We did not. I we did. did not. All right, well, this place is called Lamp no Oyado. The reason it's called Lamp no Oyado is basically because they use lamps for lights, right? Okay. And the reason they use lamps is because there's no electricity and there's no Wi-Fi or internet. Why? There's no electricity at all. 
There's just nothing except what? lamps. How does this make it up to me? This sounds like round two. Well, something. no, all right, because you are the most phone addicted person I've ever met in my life. I want to make you escape from that. Uh huh. Cut off from the world. Shit. I think the reason I look at my phone so much around you is because I, I can't bear <laughs> to make eye contact with you. You need to be cut off from the world, and that's what we're going to do now. I need to, I need to cut your mouth <laughs> your <wallet. laughs> This is how angry he's getting already <laughs> at the idea of having the internet. And because we can't actually get, it's quite deep in the mountains with lots of snow, mm. you're not allowed to drive there. So we have to park the car up, and then a special bus turns up to drive us up into the mountains. Look at all this food you've brought. It's so heavy that I have to mount it on my... You're going to be glad that I brought all the supplies. <laughs> oh, oh, you're sharing, are you? This well, is new. <laughs> getting, in those, uh, getting in those last messages. I'm going to go on the directions before I fucking disappear for 10 years. Um, I have a very important video that needs to go out in two days and it's not ready and there's a lot of stuff I need to do for it. And now Chris tells me that I have 24 hours with no internet, which is great. And thus begins Connor's slow descent into madness, already without Wi-Fi, as we head aboard the bus that will take us both further away from civilization and towards perhaps this young man's greatest fear, actual interaction with other people. <gasps> the internet's gone already. The internet's gone already. It's not even there yet. It's gone. As the last bars of internet access fade from his phone, so too does the light fade from his already glazed and soulless eyes. Agitated, isolated, and unable to Google his own name for almost 20 minutes, the young content creator snaps out in frustration. I'll kill you. Oh dear, and so it begins. But after an hour's journey away from the city and deep into the forests of North Japan, we finally reach our secluded destination, the Ryokan Lamp Noyado. You look like you've come out. Of, you, yeah, okay, you so this is the heaviest thing known to me. <laughs> you man. look like you've come out of a washing machine. Yeah, it felt like I come out of a washing machine. That's so steep that road. I I thought we were done. I thought we were gone. We were dead. Pretty nice. I'm gonna have some of the Wi-Fi code is. I'll be back. <laughs> He's already on his phone. This is, I knew this would happen. I saw you on the bus clutching your phone with two hands, no less. It was because I didn't no, know I my phone. I saw, he was like, oh, no, you oh, can't I see they got Wi-Fi. Come on, I'll have a look. They must have Wi-Fi. No. It's at this point in the video, we'd sort of walk into the room, switch on all the lights, you know, to illuminate it. Um, but instead you've got a lamp, which is incredibly dim. Um, and a uh, kerosene fire. I read the reviews on this place and they were like, I loved it, it was so serene, so peaceful. I got a killer headache from the kerosene lamp. The smell is pretty pretty potent. I like it, I feel like I'm a, an airport. Okay, actually, do you Standing like... behind a jumbo jet. <laughs> Direct, <laughs> fueling my mouth with the kerosene. And you have to put your own bed out, usually at a real car. Um, she, you know, I've they, done it a few times. They do your bed for places. you. They he, just do a better job normally. But I noticed one thing, right? And this is where it gets kind of scary. There's not a single plug socket in the room, like for power, oh, yeah. electricity, there's nothing, right? I'm gonna sit here all night, basically. This is my new best friend. You can have a drink here. Uh, we don't have any drinks. Oh. You just brought snacks. Look, look at all this shit you brought. Look at this. You got. What are you even having? Crisps. This is all crisps, by the way. No. no none of us bought these. More crisps. I share. No. I sh I ever anyone who knows oh. me knows I share oh. in the spoils. Nuts. Yeah, no, I was, I was hoping for green, but no, there's just more nuts. Okay, and then what else do you have in here? Oh, there's more in here. Oh, oh, oh. So earlier on, Connor was like, I'm not gonna be able to talk to my team and get my crane game video out or whatever it is. I found a way. There's an old school phone over there. A real phone with a real phone line. Remember those? Do you know anyone's phone number except your own? Uh, no. You can ask your team. Oh, wait, you can't. Can't ask them. I could have asked them for a phone number, but I can't. <laughs> Pick it up. Do you actually have any coins? Yeah. Do you actually? Yeah. I could do a phone call. To who? Domino. See if they deliver. <laughs> 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 I need double cross to stat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I'm taking back everything I said about the kerosene. 
Like, it, what was initially <laughs> like, oh, a nice smell. I've actually got a headache now. Of course you have, because and, <laughs> all you can smell is kerosene. I really like the, um, the kind of mythical, rustic vibe of this place, though. Mm. Like, but just behind us, you know, got the... Uh, I can never remember what these are called. Shit, what are these called? What are they called? Damn it. Uh, Did you Google? No, no, no you realise the important Japan Oh, no. I just pulled out my phone to Google what are they, and I realised we've got no internet, so that's... All the no you're about to discover that I'm actually not that knowledgeable, I just Google everything. Already I'm discovering Do the world without the internet is, is tricky. We've only been in like 10 minutes. I can't listen. <laughs> I, I think we should, you should do a challenge where you try to do a full Abroad in Japan video without opening Google to Google stuff. <laughs> we'll see how quickly. Ten. The, there is a river and um, it's a river. It's the kerosene. It's yeah, the kerosene. You, you actually will leave four IQ points live. And so to escape the kerosene fumes, we venture outside the inn and enjoy a beautiful traditional scene as snow gathers on the roofs of the buildings, lamps glowing dimly in the late afternoon sun, and picturesque surroundings untouched by the oppressive demands of modern technology. The perfect escape from civilization. I think between the lamps, the sort of wooden architecture, all the little things go, so kind of, it's a photographer's dream. Like, mm. I want to get out the camera, I want to just spend all day filming around it. But we also look like peeping toms with cameras and everyone walking around. We might but it, it, is, it is really nice though. Uh, I am a little bit cold, so I just want to get in a bath already. We'll get in a bath. We'll get in a bath. There's not that many people around today, actually, mm. so it's kind of like a ghost town. When we got off the bus, there was like six or seven people. They were like, you will only be three when you remain. <laughs> it's like Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory meets Saw. I, I really like it. I really do. No, it's nice. I, like I just it. wish they had um, internet. No. <laughs> I know from all the comments, you go, oh, you want to ruin it with your... For your one memes. day, one day, Connor, enjoy the world for what it is. I think it'd be enjoy great. Enjoy the world. You know, if I just had some, you know, no. company that was good. We sort of good company. <laughs> oh dear, so far it seems Connor isn't so impressed with his luxurious mountain in escape. But don't worry, a dip in one of Lamp Noyador's many onsen hot springs should fix his mood. Well, that is, uh, until we discover that due to a lack of electricity, the outdoor bath has no temperature regulation system, and hence, it ends up being little more than a tepid puddle. Oh my god, it's slippery, it's fucking... Why is this shit? I can't even see the waterfall, it's really blocked! How's the water? Awful. This is so shit. It's really <laughs> cold. This isn't so much a hot spring as a puddle. Um, <laughs> I think I'm going to go back inside. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's really oh. unpleasant. And yeah, they, again, I did. they did say some of the hot springs aren't good this year. <laughs> you can't control nature, Connor. Oh, nature controls you. We should drill more of the earth and get more of its crusty warm. Oh, God. The coldest hot spring I've ever been in. So this is the reason why I had to give up all civilization, so I could go in a... <laughs> Oh, a slightly... What, it's like someone spat in it. It's not even warm. <laughs> the, 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 there's a lot of like moss and stuff yeah, in the Yeah, I'm, I'm slipping. I like waxed my butt cheek when I sat down on here. You don't want the natural experience. It's um, no. it's certainly different. Okay, let's maybe maybe another one of the hot springs is better. Yeah, let's, let's get a different one. <laughs> this is too cold. Luckily, however, we are able to find a hot spring indoors that has been heated which provides a much needed source of warmth to a man whose heart grows ever colder with each passing hour without Wi-Fi. Well, we're out of the puddle and actually into a nice hot spring now. When I did this video or decided to come here, I told myself there wouldn't be a shot of Connor in a bath this time and I really? failed, I failed you. Oh. We've, well, you're in a bath. Yeah, I just realized that. <laughs> I thought you meant like alone. You've been here two hours without internet, holding up right, so far uh... so good. Yeah, just thinking about like just Wi-Fi codes, just my favorite Wi-Fi codes in my head. Just fast as time. One, two, three, four. Yeah, my favorite Wi-Fi codes of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting how Connor and I are dealing with the boredom, having no electricity, very differently. I've uh, eaten literally everything that I own in this bag while Connor's on his Stream Deck thing. Steam Deck. St Steam Deck. Oh my god. And he's got, what, three or four hours of battery left? Mm. Counting down. I was reading this, you get a little bit of paper when you check in. It says, oil lamps brought to your room between three and four. There it is up there. Uh, refrain from touching it. 
it will set off the alarm. I don't know what alarm, but apparently touching that yes. triggers something, either in there I or maybe in the room. It, say, it says, do not switch off the light at night. Oh my God. Otherwise, monsters from the darkness will descend upon you and eat your face. Here at Alni Onsen, electricity was not available until some decades ago. Even now, we strive to live simply and as much as possible without the existence of electricity. I imagine we'll be eating in the darkness as well. We're cheating a little bit. We have this panel light that I've been using to illuminate because if we don't use this, you can see it's ridiculous and we can't like make a video easily. And now it's colorful and it's a party, there you go. Only now do we see the paper where it says like, guidance, the temperature of the water in the mixed open, art, open air bath is lower when entering, please take off your clothes. That would've been great to know 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Before diving into the slimy puddle. Oh, are you getting a headache? That's what kerosene does. That's why you've got to switch the heater off at night. Oh, don't feel good. <laughs> don't, I don't, I just don't. <laughs> and now, not only do I have a headache from all the chemicals I'm smelling, I have another headache called Chris, who just keeps trying to talk to me and socialise with me. Leave me alone! As much as Connor and I are enjoying our special bonding time, it's 6 pm, and thus it's time to head for our traditional dinner. The most prominent feature of the dining hall is the Arori sunken stove in the middle of the room. A common feature of older Japanese buildings that not only provides a source of heat, but a place to gather and cook meals over the open flame. And today we're being served shioyaki ayu, or sweet fish. Delicious, smoky, and definitely not reminiscent of medieval torture methods. This is really quite cool. You know what this room reminds me of? Hogwarts. When they go like into the banquet hall. All we need now is a sorting hat. The Japanese version. What are you going to be? Cheers. Cheers. Gryffindor. 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 You'd be a Slytherin. <laughs> you'd be a... You'd be a <laughs> <laughs> I love these river trout. Fresh water trout. Yeah, me too. Underrated. Unlimited miso soup as well. Mm. It may look like the most gnarly dish you'll ever see, especially if he's eating it like that. What the fuck? When I first heard this had no electricity, I was like, I'm just cutting costs. It's like... <laughs> Yeah, we're trying to be unique. We, uh, there's no electricity and uh, no internet. It's unique, isn't it? Relaxation. But actually, you can tell they're really passionate. They, they care about it. And it's been here quite a long time, this inn. They're passionate about the baths, even though some of them aren't hot. It's not their, not their fault, is it? I think they should use electricity to heat them up. <laughs> <laughs> if, Con if Connor bought this place and renovated it, it'd be rubbish. You know? We need Starlink in every room and a flat 45-inch flat screen TV. Would your, would your room not be improved with a 50-inch TV? With dinner finished, it's time for bed. As we witness the spectacle of C Dog VA making his bed in the traditional Welsh way. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not like this. Oh. <laughs> I mean, this is this is a treat, man. You get your own room, your bed. Oh yeah, it's you... great. You know, it's just a one tier above sleeping in the wilderness. I got to make my own bed. I have no internet. I, I, you know, on the island, I had internet, right? So you I was watching that. Yeah, yeah I, I was. I think I'm starting to realise what I value in life, and it's not a roof, it's not heat, it's internet and electricity. Yeah, I mean, and not being cooked alive like yakitori while I sleep, <laughs> or or smelling like kerosene. This is awful. Oh, it's so thin. <laughs> It's nice, but it's really thin. Do you think you'll be able to sleep here tonight? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it'll be fine. I mean... This is not that bad. You have to keep the light on, though. That's one thing. And it's very dim, but it's also <laughs> sort of bright enough that it'll ruin well, your experience. Well, I'm not like you. I can sleep in light. I oh, wake no, up, I, can. I, I wake up... I can sleep in light. No. Whenever we share a hotel room, you're like, if you don't close that one atom gap, I'm, I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m. and I'm going to be fucked for tomorrow. That's what you say. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> yes. you, if I even have a little like bit of the, the curtain open, you, you throw a strop. No, I don't. Yes, you do. Never. Yes, never. you do. Never. Yes, you do. <laughs> you're, you're not going to sleep. I just realized you're not going to sleep. Well, guys, it's time for the most important final test of all, the sleep test. And I have to say, the bed's actually pretty damn comfortable. Double-layered futons, nice thick blanket and duvet to keep me warm now the heat is off. Um, this is the bit where I'd normally say, good night, everyone, and switch off the light very dramatically. But can't do that tonight. Rather bizarre situation. So I've got to sleep through that, and most importantly, prove Connor wrong that I can sleep with the light on. But... I'll give you the full sleep review tomorrow morning over breakfast. See you then. Ah, wish me luck. <sighs>
As the sun rises over another day in the land without internet, birds tweet from the mountains against the backdrop of the babbling stream meandering around the inn. And best of all, not a single WhatsApp message could be heard throughout the building. A peaceful and quiet experience had by all. Well, Connor, moment of truth. As we sit here, have a breakfast at 7.30 in the morning. How mm. did you sleep? Um, actually, I, you know, it was pretty good. And then I, I started hearing this noise. <laughs> It was like thunder, and I, I had to wait for a moment. I was like, "Oh, Chris is snoring. Is shaking the building." <laughs> oh, fuck off! You, I, I'm not kidding. <laughs> no, it I am not kidding. <laughs> yes, you are. At 1 a.m., I woke up. And I could hear your <laughs> snoring so loud. No, you couldn't. Yes, I could. No. I'm so sorry to people above you. No, that's that's absolute lies. That's not genuinely. I could hear your snoring. I had a weird moment around, like. 12 o'clock. Yeah, did you, is your body like go to complete failure from all the vibrations? Not yet, no. Snoring? I woke up and my lamp was just swaying. And I was like, what the fuck? And I looked around for like wind mm. or something. I just wasn't, it was just well, swaying I, for I no reason. Know, I think I know what it was. It what? was the sheer volume of the <laughs> snoring. How was the temperature? Uh, it was freezing, yeah, it was really cold. It, it every time I like, I, I, I toss take, to, take you back to the island, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Except with a lot more blankets, so it was doable. <laughs> I was too hot, and then I would like try and let a little bit of the cold in, and I'd get really cold too quickly. And then I'd turn my head over, oh. and the other... Oh, oh I was like, toss and turn on my duvet of gold and silk. Oh, it's just a little bit cold over here. A water load of shit. It's fine. What are you want about? I had like Guantanamo Bay torture tactics with your no, snoring no, no. going on in the other room. You couldn't sleep at all. Well, I can, I can reveal, despite the light swing and everything else, I was able to sleep very well indeed. I was great. I woke up this morning, and normally I look at my phone and I doom scroll, or read comments about how shit I am on the Abroad Japan Reddit. Instead, I looked out the window at the mountains, I heard the sound of the stream, and I thought, life is good. Why do I look at my phone every morning? Why don't I do this? Mm. And that was actually very nice. Who needs the internet anymore? I'm actually kind of dreading the flush of notifications that's going to come in. <laughs> yeah, at the moment that we get internet. It's going to be, I'm going to be like, oh no. I have to say I've rather enjoyed being disconnected from the world for a bit. Away from a morning spent doom scrolling and comments telling me that I've let myself go. Unfortunately though, it's time to get back on the bus and rejoin modern civilization. And it couldn't come soon enough as Connor's withdrawal symptoms are really starting to get out of control. As his phone is seemingly the last one on the bus to reconnect to the internet. I like the way as we come down the mountain you can hear people's phones going brruh, 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 as this phone signal comes back on. Show us. Show us the internet. Okay. Wow. UK failed to pay asylum seekers. <laughs> Yay. I just feel your phone vibrating. <laughs> You're just happy to see me. <laughs> well, Connor, we've uh, given you ramen, sake, fish. We've taken you mm. off into the wilderness to a romantic, traditional mm. inn. Have I made it up to you after the camping debacle? <laughs> Oh, I, I'm sorry. Which part was it supposed to make up to me? Was it the um, you know the freezing cold onsen, or was it the the wet fish, or the, the time when I couldn't do any work? Oh, I was in the time where I was freezing again while sleeping. Which part was it that was supposed to make up to me? Uh, I thought it was good. No, it was shit. I'm going home now. I tried. I tried my best. I tried to do my best by Connor. My best is is never good enough. Your best is <sighs> shit, mate. Until next time, guys. Thanks for joining us. A wacky weekend with the ungrateful Mr. Dog. Pretty grateful, I think. I, I think I'm grateful. <laughs> okay, okay. Son of a bit. It's called Tendu. Tengu. That's, no, that's the thing it's that called you put tengu. your pee -pee in. That's Pingu. You put your pee pee in it. Oh, fucking hell. No, that's Tengu. <laughs> this is. <laughs> that's Pingu. What am I on about? Why is it every time I'm about to say something? The it's roof falls down. It's a sign from God, don't say anything. Relaxing by the light of the fire. Wonderful. Giving a fun experience. What's wrong now? Why did you do that voice? <laughs> you just made me spit peel up <laughs> no, down my leg. And you look like John Blackthorne, the, <laughs> the white guy in Shogun, so bad. Why well, say Shogun? <laughs> Shogun? Shogun? <laughs>